How could you see your people hurt and not care? You got the power to help but when they need you not there Do you love us or not? Cause it's not clear Your response to this question is my opinion's not fair But Jesus said you supposed to love your neighbor as yourself To the point that with the poor you will share your wealth You can try but you really can't deny Though the Messiah himself lived with and served his disciples That means that everything that he had was theirs and tears that they were Greetings And we thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Law and the Testimony. We're dealing with the scriptures here, and we're dealing with them according to the law, and we are dealing with them according to the testimony, which is the writing of his prophets and apostles. Today we're going to be dealing with the topic, the name of God. All right? Now, it's a lot of different discussions upon this topic alone. And, you know, you often hear a lot of teachings concerning, you know, we should deal with this uh, translation of the name. We should deal with this transliteration of the name. But one thing that a lot of people don't understand is there is power behind the name of God. All right, We need to understand what that word name means. And we need to understand the effect that the scriptures are bringing out when it talks about the name of God. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine the scriptures. And we're going to let the scriptures speak. We're not going to really put our own thing into it. And we're going to let this be very clear. So teaching on this topic and expounding the scriptures, Brother Zadok, I'm, I'm your host, and I will be reading Brother Nashon, and we're the brothers from the Congregation of Israel, the Knesset of Jesus, back at you once again. So without any further delay, we'll let Brother Zadok go ahead and do his thing, and let's deal with this topic. All right, well, uh, total rabat, uh, Brother Nashon, yes, and uh, shalom to everyone who is joining us today, uh, whether you're watching our, television, our uh, program on local television, or if you're catching this, uh, somehow through Facebook or YouTube, uh, we appreciate the most high for you even considering to stop and check out what uh, we're dealing with. As the brother said, we're going to deal with this topic about the name of God, and or in Hebrew, the word Elohim. We're going to deal with this topic about what is his, uh, what is the true uh, 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 Shem of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I chose to deal with this topic is because, once again, you know, some of y'all may have seen our debates or whether it wasn't the debate, they may have saw some of the teachings we've right. done. There was a good teaching you done, brother, on our uh, Sister Benaiah site where you, uh, the teaching you did on the Word, Jesus. the Word of Jesus. That was a, that, that a well-sound, thought-out, and very uh, technical, technical study on the Word and how it's used in translation, transliteration, all of this. But when you get to all of it, whether you're speaking in Hebrew or if you speak uh, English, you speak Greek, Latin, Chinese, Russian, any other, other Asian languages, any of the languages of the continent of Africa. When you call upon the name of God, what does that mean? What does it mean to do things in his name? I want us to go, we're going to start this off in John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And we're going to read verse 6 and then we're going to continue to move on. But I want us for a minute to think because this argument about you have to call upon him in his true name. I saw one teacher getting on another teacher. Or even some of them may come at us. Mm -hmm. See, y'all not really dealing with the true name of the Father and the Son, which is Yahuwah and Yahushua or Yah and Yahshua or, you know, all of that stuff. This is not, at the same time, going against that title, right. that appellation, that mark that is known as name. This is not going against that, but I want to show something about the name much deeper that really you speak in Hebrew or you, if, if you are mute and you can't speak, the true thing that matters is this. Let us start this off in John 17. I heard one teacher teach this on local radio from a local um, Hebrew class and the teacher was talking about the name of God and how people not calling upon the true name of God and he said see this is what Yeshua had come to reveal he came to actually tell us what the father's true name is and so what we're gonna do is read here in John 17 and verse 6 brother I have manifested thy name unto men which thou gavest me out of the world thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word okay so I have manifested thy name unto the men. Now, I, I want you to look at the word manifest. I want you to um, just go to the Greek uh, concordance right quick. It's number 5319 in the Greek. 
Read that word and give us some of the definition of that word manifested. I have manifested thy name. All right. Manifest from the Greek word paniru, which is to render or apparent, literally or figuratively, as appear, manifestly declare, make, manifest, or manifest forth, or show, or show self. Okay, so to render apparent. When something is apparent, that means it just make it as plain as day. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? To render it apparent. When you render something, that means you're configuring it and turning it into a apparent, in your face, you can't deny what's being showed you. That's now, right. let's look at the word name that's used in the Greek. Now, we use in Greek, and I know for you Hebrew um, diehards, y'all may not accept this, but we're going to look at the Hebrew too. Uh, I have manifested thy name. Look at that, number 3686. All right, the Greek name 3686, Onoma, from a presumed derivative of the base of 1097 right and compared to 3685 it means a name literally or figuratively uh -huh. as authority character called or you know plus certain surname or surname okay because most surnames that people choose like and I believe it's is it written in Isaiah where it talk when the Lord talks about as as knowledge uh, goes to and fro throughout the earth that in those days he said that the children of Israel would start to some would scribe, some would, uh, yeah, they would even surname 44. themselves mm -hmm. after the names of Israel. Right, right. When you surname yourself, you get to go and choose a name that fits what? An attribute mm -hmm. you feel you have. Okay. Like me. My mama named me Joseph. Right. But when I surname my own self, not that there's anything wrong with Joseph or yourself, yourself or whatever, but when I chose my own surname, I chose Sadok, which has the connotation of being just. Or righteous. That's what I wanted to be. So I chose a name or an appellation or a mark in Hebrew that would say, this is, this is who I am. This is who I'm trying to be. But more than just it being a title on me, right. it's telling you what I strive to be. In my mind, what I'm trying to be. You chose your name, Nachshon. Mm -hmm. You chose it for a reason. And what right. You understand? Right. I know your I know the name your mama named you, right. but when you surnamed yourself, it wasn't just, oh, just give me anything. Name me Sweater. Right. No, it was a purpose. Mm -hmm. So the name has a mark, but that mark or that surname even still carries the idea of authority or, or the character right. that you're striving to get people to see you in, right? Okay, now, this scripture here, brother, this teacher said he used this scripture in the context of, see here, Christ himself said he manifested his name unto the men. Okay, let's read something else right quick before I embark on that point. Skip down to verse 12, same chapter. Read verse 12. Huh? Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I kept. And none of them is lost, but mm. the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Now he's talking about the only one that was lost was Judas. Right. But that was written so it wasn't a surprise like he failed his mission or right. anything. That was written. But he said, Father, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Now, the same word for name is the same word up in uh, verse 6. How do you, how are they kept, how do you be in someone's name? My brother always liked to use a statement. Uh, my brother Elijah, he always liked to use the allegory of if, if if the police are chasing a thief or a murderer with a gun and they stop him and they say and they point their guns and show their badges and say, stop, don't move in the in the name of the law. The word law don't hold no weight one way or another, but it is what? It is the authority or the reputation that law encompasses, and it's not just the police. It's the judges you're going to have to face. Mm -hmm. It's the courts you're going to have to go through. Right. It's the jails. It's the actual laws themselves written on books that cause the police to stop you and say you're breaking the law, and we have authority and power in that 